Do you know what properties of cells make a plant in other organism grow? How old cells are replaced by new ones? What is the reason for aging and death? So in today's video, we will learn about a unique type of cells called as meristematic cells or stem cells. What is their importance in organism's growth and development? You will see various types of meristems and where they are located. Next, we will see what factors regulate meristem and what happens when meristem dies or cell division gets uncontrolled. We will have a look at some of the wonderful examples in plant and animal kingdom that will make you understand the concept better. At last, we will also see some of the useful applications of meristems in plant and humans. So let's begin. Every normal cell in an organism has a definite lifespan and has to die. In order to survive, these cells need to be replaced by new and healthy cells to maintain proper functioning of an organism. Organisms have a unique reservoir of undifferentiated cells called as stem cells or meristem cells that have the ability to divide, replace old cells and give rise to different type of cell feeds. These mass of cells provide a constant supply of fresh cells for an organism to grow and produce various types of cells, tissues and organs. Without these undifferentiated meristem cells, growth of an organism would be restricted or not occur at all. Loss of stem cells or meristem activity leads to aging and even death of an organism and hence reservoir of these cells are very important for an organism. In plants, embryo, shoot tip, root tip and nodes are the major reservoir of these type of stem cells. But other meristems to some extent are differentiated. For example, a shoot apical meristem will form only shoot but not root. Likewise, root apical meristem can form root but not leaf, flower or any such organs. In case of animals, zygote that forms after sperm fuses with egg is the primary source of meristem or stem cells. Other than this, stem cells are also present in bone marrow, blood, skin, liver and most of the other tissues. But these two, to some extent, are destined to give rise to only a specific fate of cells. For example, stem cells in skin can form only skin but not any other tissue. Based on their potency to divide and ability to give rise to various fates, meristem cells can be further classified into following types. A totipotent meristem cell can by principle form all types of cells and even an organism, for example, zygote and early embryonic cells in plants. I have also uploaded a separate video on totipotency, you may check it out later. A pluripotent cell can give rise to various types of cell fates but not whole organism, for example embryonic stem cells in animals. A multipotent cell can form different cell types but not complete organism, for example hematopoietic stem cells that form different type of blood cells. Or shoot apical meristem that form various types of shoot tissues like leaf and flower. The demarcation between pluripotent and multipotent is not clear and shoot, root or intercalary meristems may be classified as pluripotent too. A unipotent stem cell or meristem cell can divide and differentiate only to one type of cell. For example, a germline stem cell can produce only sperm cell. Similarly in plants, marginal meristems of leaf will only form a particular type of leaf cells. We now know that meristem or stem cells have the innate ability to divide. The division of meristem cells is a highly regulated and coordinated process. Meristem cells are present in specific niche or locations which are surrounded by meristem maintenance signals. And as the cells displaces or moves away from these signals, they slowly lose their meristematic potency to divide and undergo specialization depending upon the surrounding signals. A cell senses its surrounding signals such as nutrient, temperature, water, pathogen, etc. through its various membrane receptors. These receptors pass on messages within the cell to the nucleus through ions, protein kinases, hormones or other such signaling molecules to bring about epigenetic modifications and expression of a specific set of genes that are essential for cell division regulation. Altering the surrounding environment alters the signaling and the cell undergoes expression of different set of genes and molecules to restrict cell division. Thus, an organism maintains homeostasis of cells depending upon the environmental cues. 
This is a life-saving strategy for organisms. It would not be wise for a plant to initiate division when it is extreme hot outside. So it waits for the right temperature and other conditions to signal its meristem to divide and grow. If cell division gets unregulated or uncontrolled, it disrupts growth, normal development and leads to severe disorders such as cancer in animals. Several proteins such as polycom protein, chromatin remodeling complexes, Bushel transcription factor, retinoblastoma related cyclin, cyclin dependent kinases, phytohormones like auxins, cytokinins, gibberellins plays a critical role in regulating meristematic activity. Providing a suitable environment, a stem cell or meristem cell can differentiate to highly specialized cell type which has huge application in restoring human health and plant industries that I am going to discuss in a moment. In humans, studies have shown promising applications of stem cells in curing blindness using corneal stem cells, treating diabetes type 1 by producing beta cells from coax embryonic stem cells, producing RBCs from hematopoietic stem cells. Other than this, it has huge potential in speeding up wound healing, restoring hearing ability, curing baldness, treating arthritis, neurodegenerative diseases and others. In case of plants, meristems are the preferred explant source for rapidly propagating plants, developing virus-free plants, genetic transformations, callus and cell suspension cultures. To learn more about it, do watch my video on 11 unique and wonderful applications of plant tissue culture. Do check out my video on plant tissue culture, research and publishing, genomics, markers, techniques and others. For queries and suggestions, do comment or email me. I will be happy hearing from you. With this, thanks and see you in my next video.